30 some years ago, uh, I met Dwight Witteman, who grew up in Mexico, graduated from Mexico High School, but I met him at CMSU. Um, it's now that's Central Missouri State. No, UCM, University of Central Missouri uh, in Warrensburg. And, uh, but then fast forward all those years, uh, when we started talking years ago, a few years ago, about going to Israel, uh, somehow the conversation that came up that Dwight and now Dwight and Anita had been a number of times and it kind of led groups and they work with a, an organization in Israel, uh, Lipkin Tours. And um, so he uh, was our stateside kind of organizer and then our tour guide uh, in Israel, uh, it was a, a woman who was born in the United States, but immigrated and married, and now has been in Israel a long time. Uh, Malka, hi Malka and Moshe, I'm glad that you're joining us today. Um, anyway, that's how the trip came about, and uh, so there are a number of folks today that are here, including a couple of visitors from South Missouri. Um, and what we're gonna we're gonna do is just uh, talk about uh, several of the photos. If you have a question, just kind of raise your hand as we're going through, um, and we've got about 20 minutes. I hope uh, that we can kind of get through this and, uh, and, and try to share. We really can't capture, and we really can't communicate all that happened um, but, and all that God did inside of us while we were there, um, but it's been, a really, it's really been a good experience. So those of you that are here if, uh, that have been on the trip, would you could join me up here? First thing we'll do is We'll introduce ourselves. You, you probably know most of these people, but I'm sure you don't know all of them. And uh, then we'll go through the slides. Uh, a couple of the folks uh, are going to just share a little bit maybe that don't have a slide to talk about. Um, and then if you have questions, um, we, can, we can take those too. Um, instead of standing the whole time, introduce yourself and then have a seat in the front row. And then when your photo comes up, then you can step back up here rather than just standing up here the whole time. How about that? Hi, I'm Kelly Jones. Gail Wagner. Sandra Reed. Hello, I'm Debbie Trokey. Darlene Hakala. Anita Witteman. Oliver Kett. Debbie McCowan. Tim Stevens. Tom Cruise. Or Dwight Witteman. <laughs> Connor Hardman. Okay, if you guys could have a seat except for Anita and Dwight. Uh, give Dwight, the, I guess, the mic. How many times have you guys been to Israel? Uh, the march was like our 19th or 19th. Oh, it's more than I thought. Yeah, you, ca you can't hardly stay away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us about that. Was this trip different? Was it, did, did God speak? I mean, even 19 times, it's got to be boring. How was this one? For you guys other than we had a person hit by a car <laughs> we, we we had we had a lost passport yeah. we had to get a, uh, the was, things like that it yeah. was the most exciting tour for, for sure it was, it was the first time i rode an uh, ambulance to the hospital you know so it was, it was exciting yeah. yeah you know i think uh oh. but you know yeah do what your wife says yeah. okay with your now, i just really want to say that um this trip was a exercise of two years you know because of covid you know, and really every morning I start with prayer, and for two years I prayed that we'd be safe and healthy, and I really believe God answered us that we were safe and healthy, and I really think that's the truth because we got a lady got hit by a car, a lady thought she had a heart, was having a heart attack, and so I think God was faithful. Yeah, you went to the hospital twice, didn't you? Well, I went to the urgent care once. Yeah. There was some emodium that had to be passed around. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. Yeah, we got a view of socialist medicine, and um, we don't want that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> no, even if it's Israel. It, yeah, and it, that it was amazing because it was really a fulfillment of, of three years of planning, two years of postponements because of COVID, and then in the end, we, we combined two separate tours that we had, and that's how we had, you know, friends from southern Missouri, Mount Vernon, Dodge City, Kansas, and Olathe, you know, all over Kansas City. So three states were represented, and and um, yeah, Mississippi. It was just, it was amazing. Yeah. Great. Okay. At the end, I'll have you come back up and share anything else too. Um, so this photo was submitted. Um, was this one, Gina Cooper? 
And so she talked at the early service this morning. This is um, the Sea of Galilee um, on maybe our second day, second or third, early on in the trip. And uh, several folks got up with the sun, before the sun, and actually were there watching as the sun rose over the Sea of Galilee. Your pastor was not one of those people. He was sound asleep uh, and missed this. Um, but what Gina, what Gina talked about this morning was that just this was a local fisherman there fishing, and exactly what you know Christ said he would do. He will make us fishers of men. And that we, uh, I even thought about this when Mark was talking. We try our best to live and communicate the gospel to people that they would come to know Christ. Uh, and that's what he's called us to do. And so that's just, I mean, it's a simple photograph, uh, not complicated, but it really does kind of capture um, every new morning when you walk out, we have an opportunity to speak with someone, somebody at the grocery store, somebody at class, on the team, at work, just in passing, and it might be that there would a conversation would start or something would be said that would, would kind of capture their hearts. God would capture their hearts for the kingdom. And so we're all fishers of men. Um, Mount Tabor. Um, yes, this is Darlene. And so... Um, you're going to tell a little bit about the Old Testament and what, what this was yes, about there. I am, because this picture was actually taken at Mount Precipice, which is outside of Nazareth. And Mount Tabor you can, is off to the left there. But from Mount Precipice, that's where, as um, Jesus came back from the, uh, his time of temptation, he came into the synagogue here at Nazareth and began to preach. And that's where he quoted the old or read out of the scroll from Isaiah um, where he had come to set the captives free. And, of course, that angered everybody. And so they up as a mob and literally dragged him out of the synagogue and up to the top of the hill. And here he is. They're wanting to throw him over. But you can look over to the left, and you see Mount Tabor, and go back now a thousand years. I mean, it's like Deborah and Barak came, and that's where God had said, I will give you the army of Sisera. Some of you may not remember all of that. It's in Judges chapter 4. But Sisera came up through this Jezreel Valley, and you guys have just had rain. And if you can imagine 900 chariots of iron going through the muck, what is going to happen? It's not going to happen. And God said, when they're all in the muck with their iron chariots, go in and just win the battle. And so this is where Deborah came, and they came down off of that mountain into that valley of Jezreel, and that's where the victory occurred. Yeah, and I think we have another photo uh, of this same area, but... Uh, exactly what Darlene was talking about, the stories that we've read and forgotten and have to go back and read and look up again, um, we're, we're standing on the place where these things happen. Oh, uh, this is actually um, actually one of those places. That's the same place, uh, Mount Precipice, outside of Nazareth where Jesus grew up. And so we gathered there, we're all seated there, and I did have an opportunity to, to kind of do a little devotion there. Um, and what I remember from this is exactly as Darlene described, they took Jesus to throw him. He had committed, in their mind, blasphemy because he's reading the, the Isaiah, the prophecy of Isaiah and saying, you have heard this fulfilled. I, I'm the person that Isaiah was talking about. But it's amazing. Uh, 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 it doesn't really describe it as a miracle, but in my mind it, it kind of is that he just walked through their midst. And because the timing was not right yet, he, yes, he was going to die for us, but, but not here and not then. And so we had a, we had a really kind of neat talk there, and it's all kind of wrapped in together. So, The Church of the Primacy of St. Peter. Who is this? This is Debbie. Uh, so come in and tell us about uh, how this was for you and maybe even why it was a little different than other things. Okay, uh this church here 
uh, if you can see, there's a rock right in the middle of the church, and the church was built around it in the fourth century. Uh, it was the oldest standing church in this area until 1263 when it was destroyed. But what was so unique about it, it was, well, and again, it was rebuilt then in 1933. But what was so unique about this church was the fact that rock, you walk into it, the church is really silent. It's just really an awesome spirit that comes over, a peace that comes over you while you're in there. And you're just, we were, there weren't that many people there in this particular church. And uh, I had to go home and study why there's a rock in the middle of a church. But uh, it comes, it's, uh, when Jesus appeared to the disciples for the third time after his resurrection at this point. And this is in John 21, uh, 1 through 17. And the dis apostles are out on the Sea of Galilee, and they're fishing, and they had fished all night. And uh, the next morning, there was a man standing on a rock on the shore, and he said, throw your nets to the other side. And when they did, their nets became loaded with the fish. And Peter looked up and realized it was Jesus standing there. And so they believed this rock is where Jesus, and Jesus was standing. And Peter would have jumped out of the boat. He swam to the shore. And then he built, made breakfast with, and the Bible says with charcoal, he made, uh, made fish and bread for the guys. And that was their breakfast there. And then um, also on this site is where, if you remember, uh, Peter denied Jesus three times at the resurrection. And they believe at this site is where Peter was redeemed because he, three times Jesus asked him if he truly loved him. And Peter said yes, all, affirmed it all three times. And each time Jesus would say, uh, first he said, uh, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and then feed my uh, sheep. And so they, and here is where also Peter was affirmed as the leader of the apostles after Jesus uh, went and ascended back into heaven. And this is where they believe the first churches were set up. So that was the uniqueness of this site. <laughs> and, and it was a, a kind of a, away from all the hustle and bustle. This was kind of a nice little quiet place. And you think back that, I mean, what happened right there? Or right. pretty close to there. And it's right on the, again, it's like I said, on the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. It's close to Taba, which is also where the church of multiplication is. Uh, a lot of the other uh, Capernaum's right there close to where Jesus started his ministry. Right. So, yeah, yep, that it was, was a really re unique. That yeah. was a night. That was a nice little visit there that we had. Okay. Sea of Galilee. I think this Connor took this photo. That's me. Um, I picked this picture because it was probably the coolest and prettiest one that I took. I took a pano uh, when we got out uh, by the Sea of Galilee, and the picture really only can capture so much. Um, as opposed to being there and being in the middle of it. Um, but where I took the picture um, is actually Capernaum. Uh, so we're, I'm standing, we're standing on Capernaum, and I took a picture of the Sea of Galilee. And uh, it, I, when we got back to the hotel, uh, we were on Wi-Fi, um, I looked up, okay, so we just went to Capernaum. What, what happened there? And I read this story when we got back to the hotel. Um, it's called The Faith of the Centurion. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes. And that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in all of Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from, e from the east and the west and will take their place at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go and let it be done as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. And it was cool. Um, pretty much after every day, we could read scripture and know that we were standing 
within probably about a football field um, of something of a miracle or something that Jesus did or something in the Old Testament that happened. And it was just so cool to go so many different places where, where Jesus was and where the people in the Bible were. Uh, before you sit down, let me get to ask you a question. Oh, good. This ought to be fun. <laughs> you led worship, uh, I think, at least three times, uh, once on the Sea of Galilee and a couple of other places. What was that like? To, to, to lead us, to sing? Well, uh, a couple times it was a surprise and sprung on me by Jed, which uh, <laughs> that's not fun, uh, but it was really, really cool. I mean, how many people can say they led worship on a boat ride in the Sea of Galilee? I mean, it was, it was pretty special. I'm glad you did, even though you didn't yeah, want yeah. to. Just give me a warning next time. <laughs> <laughs> you had like 30 minutes. The Temple Mount, the Southern Steps, uh, Debbie's going to talk about this. So this is in Jerusalem. This is uh, on the Temple Mount. Okay, so Jerusalem's built on a mountain, and the top of that mountain is where the temple was until 70 AD, and then now all that's left is just the foundation stones and the steps. So this is where we are. So this is the Southern Steps, and um, there were several places um, that I was really moved, uh, but this one was especially important to me because it really spoke to me and to us all today. And as I sat on the steps, and there wasn't very many, actually there were no other tourists there, and I think there was only about half of our group at first, and we could really just take a moment to ponder, and I sat on those steps thinking, you know, Jesus could have been sitting exactly where I'm sitting, and he could have been talking and, pre and, and teaching at that moment. Or um, as I uh, walked up and down, I realized that he could have been walking there as well, and that's very special. Um, also, uh, we believe that um, the Pentecost could have actually happened there. There are other people, uh, I know it says in scripture that it was in a, a room, but they could have moved from that room um, to be able to accommodate as many people. Uh, it talks about 120 that actually spoke in languages they had never learned. And then there were, of course, people that were also listening um, to a, their language, so it, that was more people. And then as Peter gave his discourse um, after Words, there were over 3,000 people that came to know Jesus as their Savior. So there were a lot of people, and it needed to be in a large area. Some say that it was the Temple Mount, but I just really choose to think that, uh, and it, you know what? It doesn't even really matter. We were there, and it was close. Um, but as Peter began um, speaking to the people, um, he was trying to help people realize that they were not drinking at that time, and it was early in the morning, but that they really had experienced the Holy Spirit. He, those are some of the words that he said. Um, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter uh, and the other apostles, Brother, what shall we do? Brothers, what shall we do? And you know, I love that because that's speaking to us today, that we are to ask the same thing. Um, and it should be cutting to our hearts as we think about people that have, don't know Jesus. Peter replied, and this is so cool, and this is our message too today, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are, are far off, for all who the Lord our God will call. And um, as I've listened to you all today, I realize that you are a church that loves others and will go either close here by what we heard earlier today or far away. And um, that same commission um, that Peter gave to those people 2,000 years ago is the same commission that he gives us today to go and, and tell people about what Jesus has done for us. And I love that. Um, and the children that he's speaking about, well, that's us. Um, as we go out 2,000 years ago. And you know, it hit me when I was there that there was a lot of crazy stuff going on during that time. Jesus had been crucified, he had died, or been resurrected, and then gone up to heaven. And I thought to myself, you know what? There's a lot of crazy stuff going on today with us as well um, in Jerusalem and Israel, as we keep hearing on the news, and also just in our world. And, you know, it's just comforting to me to realize that the Holy Spirit is telling us the same thing, is just be ready and go tell as many people as you can. Um, that message has never changed. Jesus is the same 
uh, yesterday, today, and forever. And the message is the same. And, you know, people are the same. Believers are the same. And so just because of uh, the beauty of uh, those steps and how um, large they were, they, they were just so magnificent, so wide, um, it just blew me away. So. It, was a, it was a pretty moving place and moment. And there's a close-up. Um, I, I don't know exactly. I don't remember where we were, but that's about half of our group. I, we were on a longer We were down in the tunnels. Yeah, right. Um, but that, that was a, a pretty neat deal. Um, speaking of tunnels, uh, Tim is going to tell us a little bit about, I think this is your photo, isn't it? Um, this is in Zipporah National Park. Israel has lots of national parks, obviously all kinds of historical and, and archaeological places. The beauty, the beauty of Israel, especially in the spring, was kind of, uh, I was surprised by it a little bit. And so we had the opportunity to go here, uh, but there's a lot going on here as far as uh, engineering and just the history of the people there, and we got to go down in these aqueducts. So I'm not going to speak a lot about the history part of it because I couldn't memorize all of that, but there's a bunch of information. But uh, the main premise of this picture is, is the absolute amazement of these aqueducts were full of water. I mean, at one point in time, you see the hole uh, kind of in the ceiling. That was how they saw where their water level was. Um, but this, this is coming up a mountain. So this is one of the tunnels that leads to a reservoir. Uh, and then there's another tunnel that goes even higher than that that leads to a main reservoir. And, and they're bringing water up. They're bringing water up. I mean, it's, a, it's what we call a siphon effect. And it's absolutely the most amazing thing that I've ever seen in real life as far as engineering goes. And I'm kind of, that, that's who I am. I love figuring out how to do stuff like this. But on a scale like this, it's just, uh, I, I've never seen anything like it. I don't think I ever will. And it, and it just kind of, I, I would guess, I don't know exactly how deep this is, but that's a group of us standing at the bottom of it. So it's probably 40 foot tall, 40 to 50 foot tall, and it was completely full of water, rushing water, heading north, not south, to basically feed the, mm -hmm. the water to the top of the mountain. And there, there were more than one place. That, I mean, this was outside, but, but uh, they did the same thing in the city of Jerusalem. When the 3,000 people were baptized, if you go down from the Temple Mount, the southern steps, there were the, the mikvahs, the, the carved out of stone where the J Jews coming to, to into the, the temple, they would have had to ritually wash to, to, in order to get in there. Well, that was the water that then Jesus, uh, that Peter used to baptize 3,000 people. So it made sense that it all happened. Well, that water comes into Jerusalem through Hezekiah's tunnels underneath. Uh, that's how they protected the city, and a lot of the engineering was amazing. We had, I took over 1,600 pictures in my day, so I, I had a hard time trying to figure out exactly which one, and we actually, hi Malka, she, she led us, I, I guess what she, she called us the centurions. Led the centurions, us, yes. Us younger guys that were part of the group that physically, and ladies, and ladies went with her, uh, to, to certain places that normal tours just don't go. They let us do some uh, secret escape tunnels. They let us do, actually, one of them was, uh, it sounds kind of gross, but it's not active now. <laughs> one of the old sewer uh, from Jerusalem out of the old city. And I don't know how long that tunnel was, but that, that just, I don't know. It's, this was the one that I could get the explanation out and not be crazy emotional because a lot of that stuff was, uh, was really emotional, just being there and seeing what we saw thinking about who was there before us and for how many thousands of years right. it's been there. So. Yep. Thank you, Tim. Um, I believe this is Kelly. She's going to tell us a little bit about the, this place. Okay, this is also on the Sea of Galilee. This is Pasga, and it's close to Capernaum, and that was Jesus' kind of adopted um, center of ministry. But um, by far places that we went on the Sea of Galilee were um, some of my very favorites. And I think it's because when I was thinking about going, I wanted to walk where Jesus walked. I wanted to see his land. And the Sea of Galilee hasn't changed. You know, many places we went to, they've built some kind of chapel or, you know, there's a building over um, the authentic site. But it just felt like at the Sea of Galilee that we were seeing the shore looking across like Jesus did. Um, we rode in the boat across to the other side, and 
right off the um, side of the Sea of Galilee, it just goes right up into the low rocky hills and then to the mountains, and it it's, um, really made scripture come alive for me. But this is the point where they believe Jesus called the first four disciples, and there are some warm springs that come into the Sea of Galilee at this spot and attract fish. And so it was really fun to hear the background that supports um, the stories that are in the Bible. And they also told us that there were basically two times during the year when they fish, and the rest of the time the boats were used just to take people back and forth across the Sea of Galilee. So I loved getting all of the background information. But definitely this is the most important trip I've ever taken, by far the most impactful. And uh, we've just been home barely a month, and I just feel like um, I think about it all the time, and just so many little connections. Earlier when we were singing the one song, and it talked about um, the tree bending beneath the weight, I thought of Bethlehem Overlook, and the wind had blown those trees out almost over sideways. So um, it was very meaningful. And I also want to say that I'm really, really thankful that the young guys went with us. Um, Mark and Tim, what uh, an investment you have to give to your kids and to Cole and Connor, you know, just to go in your early 20s. You know, I would encourage anybody that thinks this sounds like it would be a good trip, you know, go sooner rather than later because you then you're going to share and it, it's um, just really meaningful. But it was a wonderful trip with great people and um, so glad I went. And you have 700 photos yeah. to, oh. to oh, <laughs> share with your grandkids. Yeah, I thought I had a lot of photos. I had 751, but you like doubled it. That's awesome. And one more thought. Um, even though I'm, you know, going in my 60s, I'm just super excited because I can't wait to share this with my grandkids. And it really does make the stories go from black and white to color. And it's just exciting to, you know, to have that um, rich context that we got from being there. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. Pastor Mark, are you going to... Cole, you're up. ancient places, <laughs> but not many are more ancient than Jed. Lord, forgive me for what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> but something I learned is, um, you know, I'm, I'm working my way through the New Testament right now, and reading the stories and um, hearing about Jesus traveling from place to place, um, you would think it's, you know, he's traveling forever. He's traveling, you know, hours and hours and hours, but in reality, you know, he may only be walking a couple hours from town to town. So, yeah, it was really, especially around the Sea of Galilee, pretty compact. Yeah. yeah so, that's okay. Kind of what I learned. Um, Pastor Mark? Okay, uh, like like you said, Jed said pick you know one picture, and like Tim, I I don't even I didn't count, but I've hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures. But really, the whole trip boils down to two pictures, and I, I figured this out. Uh, so first one, this is what my room looked like, that the youth pastor room. You can see the beautiful view, right here, and then really the whole trip. This is what it's all about. This is what Jed's room was. Nice uh, balcony overlooking the Sea of Galilee on the mountain over here. This is his shot, and then I, Tim and I, we got stuck with a big wall. So, um, but no, everywhere we went, Jed got the penthouse. So we spent a lot of time in Jed's room. Um, but that, yeah, that's uh, the whole trip. That's pretty much, that's it. Um, Nick. Um, here's, here's my picture, though. I wanted to talk about the Mount of Olives. Uh, there, uh, like I said, there's so many places that we didn't talk about. We don't have time to talk about, but, uh, you know, the Jordan River, and we, we baptized several people in the Jordan River. That was really awesome. And going to float in the Dead Sea, that was, that was really cool, too. Um, 
uh, and then, but really old Jerusalem, when you got down south, out, out of the northern area of the Sea of Galilee, you come down south to Jerusalem in that area, um, that was probably one of my favorite places, just because of all the history there around it. Um, it. There was a lot of things that shocked me uh, throughout the whole trip, but one of them was, you know, when you're walking through Jerusalem, you, you don't see this in Scripture really, but there's no wood anywhere. It's all stone. Everything is made of stone, and the whole city, the, ro- the road, the walls, the ceilings, everything is stone. Um, and that, I didn't, that surprised me. That shocked me a lot. But this is from uh, Jerusalem looking out at the Mount of Olives. Um, and, and I picked this one just because there's so much history in the Bible. Just uh, do a word search on the Mount of Olives, and there's so many cool stories about it. And it's mentioned so many times. Um, but going out from the city, oh, kind of over here, you go down this big valley, you walk down, and then you walk way up this big hill, and you walk all the way up to the top. Um, and one of the, the things that our, our tour guide told us, Malka told us, is that the topography really hasn't changed at all. Uh, it's newer roads, but it's still the same roads that was there in the Bible. And um, So when you go and you read stories about the Mount of Olives of David g- leaving the city and ascending the road up to the Mount of Olives, like we got to walk that, and we got to do the same thing. It was really cool. Uh, and in all the times, it says this was a normal place for Jesus to go uh, because he went there so often. He would leave the city, go down the mountain, walk down the mountain, walk up. It's like a 20-minute walk, um, but he would, he would go there often. Now, all of this white here is, is looks on the picture, it's hard to see, but it, lo- it looks kind of like snow, but it's tombs. Uh, it's all burial tombs right now, uh, which was not there during Jesus' time. It would have been all green olive trees everywhere on that. But uh, if you, you, know, you want to be spend a whole bunch of money, you can get buried on the Mount of Olives there. Uh, and the reason they do, they spend all this money on the Mount of Olives is because of Zechariah, uh, the book of Zechariah, where it talks about um, in it that when Jesus, when the Messiah returns, he will step foot on the Mount of Olives, and he's going to return here. Uh, somewhere on that mountain range there is where the Messiah is going to return and put his feet down uh, overlooking Jerusalem. Uh, and so the the Jewish people, all they spend a lot of money to be buried right there where the Messiah is going to return. Now, we see that we know that it's, it's Jesus. They miss that. But um, that's why they spend so much money in burial tombs, just thousands and thousands of burial tombs. But there's a lot going on here. Kind of like Cole said, everything is so close. Everything is so close. There's all kinds of sites and everything just right here. Garden of Gethsemane is over there. Bethany and Beth Page is up there on the top. Uh, it's all just so close, but that that was one of the places that I, I really enjoyed of, was the Mount of Olives and just seeing the history, but also thinking about the future of when Jesus returns and what it's going to be like when he's standing on the Mount of Olives. Here, we get into prophecy. I mean, that's why there's so much turmoil there now, uh, that all these things are going to happen uh, in this area. Um. Before I close, and I'm going to actually have Dwight and Anita share a little bit, but Sandra and um, Gail are going to share just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why I put the mic up. Um, we, that's all of our fo- our photos, but yeah, we do. We're running late, but we do have a couple minutes, um, and so why don't you guys just share a little bit about what the trip is for you? Who wants to go first? Okay. Um. I don't have any pictures to show. I took pictures, but uh, just haven't been able to get things done with that. Um, I guess uh, there were there were a lot of things for me. Um, I'll try not to rehash, you know, what I shared earlier. But but one thing that was that I thought was really cool was the the Via Della Rosa that we walked, which was tons and tons and tons of walking it was something else <laughs> but but it was amazing to walk that and to know you know what it meant to walk that path and we and we walked it and there were just all these you know shops and everything that we that we saw just these little um, little they were shops, but some of them are no, were no wider than maybe four or five feet wide. They were just really deep, and they just had all this, you know, stuff in it, whether it be food or trinkets or jewelry or whatever at the yard. But the but the other lady that we went to see, 
who is kind of, you know, in that stone uh, building. That is where we s uh, did the Sabbath thing with lighting the candles. And that was just really, really cool. And then going to the Western Wall was really meaningful for me because, um, you know, we got to, we went on the Sabbath, you know, and celebrated the, the Sabbath celebration with, with all the dancing. And they just, you know, they just pulled us all into that. You know, we got to dance and, and sing and whatnot. But then we went, I think it was the following Monday, uh, to go so that we could take prayer requests and leave them in in the western wall because there's th it's it's stone and you have the the big stones but there are crevices and things so we got to matter of fact I think Gail was <laughs> pulled together you know pieces of paper for us to write down prayer requests and we could go and we went there and we put our prayer request in, in the little crevices wherever we could find room and got to spend time praying. So th there, there was a, a whole lot, and um, I'm thankful that I went because, yeah. Yes, yes. Gail? I won't take up too much time, but I did bring my scrapbook, so if anybody wants to see pictures, they'll be back there. Um, <laughs> trying to hold this thing in front of me. Um, okay, the Sea of Galilee. I, I know a few people mentioned it, but out on the boat, it just meant so much to me. Just sitting there on that boat and thinking, you know, this is where Jesus walked on the sea, and he walked up to the guys that were fishing, and he said, Peter, come out here, you know. And then Peter, he came out, and he lost faith. So Peter started sinking. Jesus saved him. Okay, that happened there. Then the, the demons went into the swine, and the swine went down into the sea. We could see where Hershey was, and we could see where the place was that the swine went into the sea. The camel ride, we haven't told you about that one. <laughs> The camel ride was so scary. <laughs> um, we were on top of a mountain, and we <laughs> the the trail was on the mountainside. So, if that camel slipped, you went down that mountain. <laughs> and I that's a picture that I have. But you're glad you did it. I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> yeah, and Greg rode with me. He was sinking yeah. up there. <laughs> like I was, I was scared too. <laughs> But it got to where it was only like 14 inches wide, and, and the oh yeah, it was scary. Um, there were so many things. But anyway, I'm gonna. Yeah. If you have a few minutes, yeah, Gail does to have her. her uh, she's put together a scrapbook, and so she has that in the back. Um, anything else? So um, we've already talked about the Southern Steps and uh, the. Some of the group got there early, and we were somewhere else. And then we, when we got there, we were walking up there, and this is a picture of the guys. And I thought, this is where Peter may have stood. And so we sat down, I would sit down, and I, I think they could hear me, but I read out loud Acts chapter 2, Peter's sermon there, uh, which we've already referred to. And it does say that they were cut to the heart. And they said, what should we do? And Peter replied, repent. And repent just means, I mean, it's a loaded word, especially in our culture today. It just means change. Change your mind. Maybe like Pastor Mark, try something new. And for lots of us in the room, that moment came and we tried Jesus. And he has been faithful ever since. The goodness of God. And I thought, we're sitting where, where, where Peter preached all this and where it all happened, and yet it's, it's, it's today. It is still us today. So as we, um, as we close today, uh, I want to ask Dwight and Anita to come back, and um, uh, I want you, Dwight, to pray uh, for us. Okay. Will you do that? You I'll, put you on the, I'll put you on the spot. 
if you'll stand together, we're going we're gonna to close. I'm just going to have Dwight pray. Uh, you know, we're all thankful uh, that we live in a country and a place and a time that God chose that we were born here. Um, we've made friends with Malka and Moshe, and you guys have known them years, and other people that I'm more sensitive to what's happening there now. And I'm more sensitive to what the Bible says when it says it because, wow, I, I may have been there. And so even I would have been a better pastor had I gone 30 years. When I was, if I had gone when I was your age, I'd have been a better pastor. But that's behind us. And so I'm going to be a better pastor moving forward because now I have been. I'm trying new things. Uh, I'm, I'm in, energized in this. And so as we, as we close and we leave today, I'm going to go back to what we started with. Jesus said, I will be with you. And I know there are people in the room that have been through very hard things. And there are a few of you in the room that right now has been the hardest moment of your entire life. So he doesn't call us to do anything that he won't equip us for. And it doesn't make sense sometimes. But remember this. And this is what he said. I am with you always. So Dwight, if you'll just pray us out. And then we'll close with our chorus at the end.